When the Cray was a small child, his father abandoned him and his mother. I wrestled with a sense of self-worth and, 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 and w am I even valuable uh, because my dad decided, you know, drugs would be better than hanging out with his own son or, or, or staying with me. He found a sense of belonging in the hip-hop culture on the streets. My uncles were young and um, wrapped up in the streets and, you know, gangs and drugs and, and just promiscuous and I idolized it. It was a, I mean, it was just a, I wanted to be the gang member my uncle was. I wanted every tattoo he had. You know, I saw my first gun and all these different things and I was like, man, this, is, this must be what it means to be a man. And I'm just sitting on their laps soaking all this stuff in like, wow, you know, and so I was like, you know, a child of rap and hip hop, just seeing this world come up around me. In his teens, Lecrae realized something was still missing. I knew my ways were unfulfilling. You know, I chased power, I chased pleasure, I chased possessions, I chased um, just something satisfying. And I knew I kept getting let down. I knew it was, it was insanity and I was never going to find fulfillment, but I didn't know what else to look for. He kept a Bible in his car as a good luck charm. One night, police caught him trespassing and in possession of drugs. He was cuffed and sat in the police car waiting to go to jail. And the police officer goes to my car and he saw the Bible and he came back to the police car and he said, uh, son, you got a Bible in your car? And I said, yes, sir. He said, you know, you know what that Bible's about? And I was like, I need to. And uh, he said, well, you know what, I, today I'm gonna let you go because I want you to get into that Bible and I want you to start living it. And that really did something to me and that really, that really rocked me and I, I didn't want to get in any kind of trouble like that again. He joined some friends at a Christian conference where he heard what Jesus did for him on the cross. And he talked about Jesus, you know, carrying his cross on the mount on, on, on Golgotha and, and, um, and just the, the, the turmoil and the pain that Jesus went through, that Jesus would take all that on his own back, floored me. And I said, I, I, I don't want to live like this anymore. And, um, and I just bowed out and said, Jesus, I'm sorry, and just broke down crying. For a year, Lecrae walked a line between college partier and committed Christian. His life was spinning out of control, and he knew it. Just cried out to the Lord one day. I said, God, I feel like um, I'm going to kill myself or kill somebody. And I said, please, just, just stop me before it gets to that point. I said, stop me. Do whatever you got to do. Just don't kill me. He was finally stopped in a massive car accident that left him evaluating his double life. I came out without a scratch. You know, my car had flipped over, it was dented in, damaged up, and here I am without a scratch on me. And I said, okay, God, I need to, I need to change. Later that night, he gave his life completely over to God. Oh, I was radically changed. To realize that I had been living a lie, to realize that I was unsatisfied and I would never be satisfied until I came to Jesus was so revolutionary for me that I wanted everyone to taste it. I wanted everyone to see how awesome God was. Lecrae typed out his testimony and handed it out on his college campus. He talked about God to anyone who would listen. And I was proud. I was proud to have my story on that piece of paper. And I got laughed at and I got called Jesus freak and Jesus boy and, you know, all kind of stuff. But I was changed. Before long, he learned he could blend his passion for God and his ability as a rapper. I thought that God and rap would never work. I thought that God wasn't okay with rap. You know, people knew I used to rap, and I went to the Bible studies, and someone said, uh, hey, why don't you, you know, rap about Jesus? And so I, just on the spot, I just came up with the rap about Jesus, and, uh, and they were like, man, that was good. And, um, and I was like, wow, Lord, maybe you could really do something with this. He began ministering to kids in juvenile detention. I ended up there for three years, every weekend, just sharing my heart and sharing scripture and rapping as their praise and worship on Sundays. His music has spread around the world. His newest CD, Rebel, debuted at number two on iTunes. But his purpose goes way beyond selling CDs. I want to use my art form to encourage the movement in the church to say, hey, let's engage the city, let's rebuild the city. And so that's really where my heart is, is to, is to rebuild cities, is to see the city come to Jesus. And if you don't know him, you're missing out on purpose, meaning, and life in general. And so I'm passionate about seeing people spend eternity with him. He's awesome. The love of a father that he missed as a child 
he now finds in his relationship with God. He's just loved on me when I felt like I didn't deserve love, when I felt like I was unlovable. I'm really grateful and I feel fortunate to, uh, to have a, a huge family that is beyond race, creed, culture, and to have a father who shepherds us all. And when I think about that, my mind is blown. I, I, I mean, there's nothing like it.